Design can make or break how well your dashboard communicates your message. Unfortunately, there are some common mistakes I see again and again. At best, they make you look like an amateur, and at worst, they make your report difficult to read and can even be misleading. In this video, I'm going to cover five fundamental report design rules you can easily implement. Chart junk is one of the most common issues I see. It's the term coined by Edward Tufte that refers to all visual elements in charts that aren't necessary to comprehend the data or that distract the viewer from the information. Now Tufte would have you remove everything that didn't fit this strict definition, but I think there's a balance between using design elements that grab an audience's attention and unnecessary embellishment and duplicate information. Let's start by removing the chart junk elements in this dashboard. In the bar charts, we have duplicated information in the form of horizontal axes. These aren't required on charts that also have data labels. Likewise for the grid lines in the bar charts and the vertical grid lines in the line chart. The legend in the average bar charts is not required when there's only one series in the chart. Not to mention it's kind of misleading because these are average values. The legend is automatically labeled total by the pivot table that supports the charts. With this noise removed, we can still easily read the values without being distracted by the labels and grid lines, which were redundant. We also have more room for the data because the horizontal axes aren't taking up space. Other forms of embellishment that we have here are the gradient fills on the bars and the glow and shadow effects. The background fill on the map charts is particularly distracting and the dashboard background itself isn't adding any value and you can't see enough of the pattern for it to be of interest. If we focus on the line chart, the glow effect and markers just add noise to an already busy chart. Also, the line colors aren't distinct enough, which makes it difficult to distinguish Bob and John's data. Now that I've removed the dark background, the dark filler on the charts and slices is too heavy, and it implies that these are the most important elements in the dashboard. So let's fix that next. Our dashboard is looking much cleaner. However, the chart titles and axis labels dominate the visuals. They should be secondary to the bars. So let's tone them down by removing the bold formatting and we'll change them to a shade of gray. Okay, that's the chart junk dealt with. The second rule is to use white space to improve readability. White space helps readers understand the content better by forming distinct areas in your report. The white space in this report is pretty good in that we've got the charts nicely aligned. However, the blue chart borders are a bit busy. We can remove them all together or just tone them right down to a pale shade of gray, which is my preference. With the bright blue borders gone, the data elements are now the most prominent information, as it should be. Color is perhaps the most powerful reporting tool we have available because it's so quickly and clearly conveyed. We can use it to draw attention to a key metric or data point. For example, we can highlight the high point in the spark lines in red to make them easy to see. Bold colors have more emphasis than lighter shades. And you can see an example of this in the map charts, which code the larger values in the darker shade of blue. You should also keep people with color vision deficiency in mind. And there are some links in the video description to resources for choosing colors suitable for readers with color vision deficiency. You can also use the accessibility checker in Excel. Now, like with many things, less is more. A good rule of thumb is to use no more than three different colors in your reports. You can use shades of a color to differentiate, as I've done here. And lastly, we can use color to link data points and areas together, using the same colors to show they have something in common. For example, here we can color the shipping data different to the sales data. This enables the reader to automatically relate charts to one another with less time required to read labels to get the same understanding. You can help reduce the cognitive load on your audience by sorting data in order of importance. Depending on the data, this might be in ascending or descending order. Here I've sorted the bar charts in descending order to help the reader quickly identify the order of items based on their values. When it comes time to sharing your report, it's a good idea to reduce noise around the dashboard and focus your reader's attention. 
We can start by hiding the sheet tabs via the file tab and then down in options and under advanced if we scroll towards the bottom we can deselect show sheet tabs for this workbook. And then on the view tab we can make sure grid lines are turned off. We can also turn off the formula bar and the headings which are the row and column labels. We can minimize the ribbon or go into full screen mode via the drop down here, full screen mode. The keyboard shortcut is Control Shift F1, but in earlier versions of Excel it's just Control F1. Now these settings, except the formula bar, are retained for the file, so when you share it, it will open in full screen mode with the grid lines, column and row labels hidden. Now to revert back, you can click on the ellipsis in the top right, and then click on the drop down, Always Show Ribbon. And then from there we can turn back the formula bar and headings and of course go back into the file tab to turn on the sheet tabs. I hope you found these tips helpful. You can see the tutorial and download the file for the dashboard used to demonstrate these points from the link here. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.